In this session we will look at location number 12, which is Hebron. Now Hebron is the place of covenant. In 2 Samuel 2, verse 1 to 3, it says, After this, David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, To which shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. So David went up there with his two wives, Ahinoam the Jesuitess, and Abigail the widow of Nabal of Carmel. And David brought up his men who were with him, each one with his household, and they dwelt in the towns of Hebron. Now the word Hebron means a place of unity, oneness, alliance, union, and joining. Now, if you look at Micah, Micah 2 verse 13, it says, The breaker, the Messiah, will go up before them. They will break through, pass in through the gate, and go out through it, and their king will pass on before them, the Lord at their head. Now, the word breaker here is the word parats. It means to break out, to burst out, and to be opened. Now, the breaker is your set man or your spiritual father. He is the one that breaks open for you new ground and new things such as new revelation. David was the first one that went to Hebron. God told David, go up to Hebron. Thereafter his men and their households were brought up to where David was. You see, this is a very simple principle. If David didn't go up, his men and his households also could not go up. And he couldn't bring his men up with him. So as a spiritual father, it is your responsibility to go up. You cannot stagnate. You cannot be passive. You must continuously be stretching yourself to the next level. And the advance and the breaking out of a spiritual father is crucial to his capacity and his ability to bring with him those who are following him. You see, as long as the said man or the spiritual father is following Christ, you can follow him. There has to be an obeying and submission to the spiritual father. That is this breaking forth. David was made captain at the Dulu. But when he came to Hebron, he was crowned king over Judah. This speaks of a higher level of connectedness and of submission to the said man. You see, when you start off in your journey with your spiritual father, he's your captain. As you travel through the different locations and you come to this place, Hebron, which is the place of covenant, you must come to the place where you have the ability to crown him as king. Now again, this is dangerous ground. I'm not saying you must worship your spiritual father. I'm saying to you that you must come to the place of obedience in your walk with the sick man or the spiritual father in your life where you instantly obey the instructions of your spiritual father. There can be no thinking about it. There can be no pondering about it. You need to action and move. If It's very simple. It, it, it starts with the small things. If I was your spiritual father and you were here today, and I say to you five minutes break, you will have the discipline to check yourself and 
on four minutes you'll be seated at your desk so that in five minutes we can start. Are you, are you getting the, 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 the picture? I must not have the responsibility to call you and say it is now time to, to start again. You, you got, I'm not, I'm not criticizing, I want you to understand, I'm trying to convey to you the principle. It's, it's excellence. Um, if I say we are now breaking for lunch, please get yourself food. I don't have to come back four times to tell you, please help yourself to some food. You're getting, you're getting the picture? And this is what we are looking at. If there is an instant response, there is an instant reaction when the spiritual father speaks to you because you've come to this place, this position of covenant where there's a response, an immediate, an instant response. In Second Samuel 2 verse 4 it says, And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, The men of Jabesh Gilead buried Saul. Okay. What you need to see is that there is a definite submission and obeying of the spiritual father of the said man, in the case of David, by the house of Judah. Paul says, imitate me. Judah knew how to follow and how to interpret uh, Jesus. How to imitate David. You remember the scripture that I read you on the vine, the vine, the fold that is tied to the vine in Genesis 14, 9 verse 11? Judah knew how to tie and to bind himself to the choice vine. Israel's commitment to David is very much the same like that of Moses and Joshua that we read of in Numbers 11. How Joshua bound himself to Moses. He lived in the tent. He stayed in the presence of Moses. He never left Moses. Now that is the place where we need to be in this location in our relationship with our spiritual father. We must be in that place where we are constantly pursuing him. We are constantly following him. We are camping out in his presence. We do not want to leave his presence. We want to stay in the house. We want to stay in the tent that outside of the out of the camp. You see, in 2 Samuel 5, verse 1 to 3, all the tribes of the Israel came to David and Hebron and they told him and said, Behold, we are your bone and we are your flesh. And they carried on and they said, In times past, when Saul was king over us, it was you who led out and brought in Israel. And the Lord told you, you shall feed my people Israel and be bring prince over them. So all the elders of Israel came to the king at Hebron. And King David made a covenant with them there before the Lord. And they anointed him king over Israel. So you see now, after Judah has Judah established him king, all the rest of Israel also came and recognized David as the anointed one of them of God. In Numbers 27 verse 16 and 17 it says, Let the Lord, the God of the spirits of all flesh, set a man over the congregation, who shall go out and come in before them, leading them out and bringing them in, that the congregation of the Lord may not be a sheep which have no shepherd. You see, the nation of Israel knew the value and the importance of a set man or a spiritual father, like they had with Moses. They knew they had to be connected to Moses, or they would be like sheep without a shepherd. And what I'm saying to you today is there need to be a deeper level of connection between you and your spiritual father 
when you come to this location called Hebron, you are able to take this if you are able to come to this position of this level of covenant where your saint man, where your spiritual father you relate to him not only as captain but as king you will come to a place where disobedience in your life will no longer manifest itself because you've crucified the flesh in you and you've come to a place where you can walk in the spirit like you should you see both Saul and Jonathan had to die in order for David to come to this or to go up to this place that is called Hebron every inaccurate mindset every inaccurate relationship in your life every inaccurate alignment has to die before David can be anointed as a king at Hebron you see everything in you that is inaccurate any relationship in your life that is inaccurate every piece of doctrine in you that is inaccurate must die before you will be able to come to that place to position the spiritual father in your life as king you understand what I'm saying? and again let me emphasize that for the sake of the audience I'm not saying that you must hear or worship a man I'm speaking of a spiritual position of recognizing the grace that God has placed in your life it's not about the man it is about being connected to the spirit of Father Amen This brings us then to the last and the final location which is Zion in 2nd Samuel 5 verse 7 it states nevertheless David took the stronghold of Zion that is the city of David now the word Zion means fortress it also means place of elevation now, Zion is the place of our destiny. That is where we want to get to. You remember earlier today I said to you that Zion is a place, it's a dry place. It's a place that everywhere, everything that is not God cannot survive because God is light. Everything will be consumed in your journey towards Zion. Nothing that is from the flesh will be able to function and operate at this location Zion is a place of ultimate ruling a stronghold is a place where you rest from your enemies it's a place where you experience an increase in strength and authority it is a position of maturity and where you execute the purposes of God in your life this is a position of dominion There's a dimension in your walk with God where you can live where the demonic realm cannot touch your life. You live from this place because in this place it is called Zion there's only light, there can be no darkness and darkness will perish so therefore it cannot even enter into that dimension see once you come to this place where you operate from this location in Zion nothing can touch your life anymore nothing of this world can influence you because you've come to a place of maturity in Christ in 2 Samuel 5 verse 6 it states and the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites the inhabitants of the land who said to David you shall not enter here for the blind and the lame will prevent you they thought 
David cannot come in here. Then just a little bit further on in verse 8 he says, And David said on that day, Whoever smites the Jebusites, let him get up through the water shaft and smite the lame and the blind who are distested by David's soul. So they say, the blind and the lame shall not come into the house. When you look at this word blind, it speaks of having a covering over the eyes, a film. The lame speaks about one that is limping, one that hesitates. And the only way that you can enter into Zion is through the water shaft. The only way Zion can be taken and where you can position yourself in Zion is through the water shaft. Now the water shaft is a symbol, it's a picture of spirits fold word. It's a picture of the proceeding word of God. You see, the Zion house must be established in present day truth. And sons will strike the lame and the blind with the spirit fold word. You see, as a son you can no longer carry within you a word of compromise. You cannot compromise the word because you feel sorry for people. You will tell somebody you are in an inaccurate place. You need to align yourself without uh, making excuses for where you are coming from. I'm not saying you must be judgmental. I'm not saying you must be without love. What I'm saying is that you will only operate from the position where the Word of God is your reality. And it will not be the Logos Word, it will be the spiritual Word that is vibrant, that is alive, that is a two-edged sword that will cut between bone and marrow, that will separate the flesh and the spirit. Powerful, powerful place to be. Now, very important here that you need to see is it was the sons of David who was led by Joab that defeated the Jebusites at Zion. It was the sons that fought the battle. David, however, as the father, is the one who gave them the strategic battle plan. He said to them, you've got to attack, but you've got to go through the water shaft. You see, this is how it works. The spiritual father will tell you how he must defeat the blind and the lame elements within you and within the house. And he will do it through the spiritual word. And these mindsets needs to be dealt with before you can take the holy hill of Zion. Now, Jebusites is a spiritual picture of the flesh. It is a picture of people that cannot see or walk into anything spiritual because of the flesh that hinders them. These people had no idea of the magnitude and the weightiness of the destiny that there was upon David's life. Blindness and lameness is mindsets or ways that cannot be tolerated and that will not be tolerated in Zion. These have to be eradicated in your life before you can rule and reign from Zion. Again, be aware that it was David as the said man, as the spiritual father, that instructed his mighty men on how to overtake and how to capture and how to defeat the genocides and to take Zion. He received the strategic plan from God the Father, from the heavenlies. But his sons 
carry out the mandate. Why and how? By obeying every word that David spoke to them. In their submission to this set man, to their spiritual father, they took Zion. That is why the key of obedience is so important for you as a son. If you are a son, it is so, so important to you. Because it is the key of obedience that will bring you to overcome so that you can come to Zion. You see, the men of David would never have been able to take this land called Zion if they have not listened to the instructions of David. Let me ask you, do you see a pattern through this journey that we've been on today? I want to say to you and I want to submit to you that there will be no overcoming, there will be no breakthrough unless there is an obedience and submission to your spiritual father that God has strategically placed over your life in order that you can experience your breakthrough. God doesn't want to see you stuck in the cave of doom. He wants you to break out, out of the cave, enter into his holy hill. And that is why he has placed the same man as spiritual father over a household to bring his people to this position that is called Zion so that his glory can shine forth. It is in this place where there is a deeper desire for a deeper relationship with the Lord. And this desire is first of all birth in the heart of the spiritual father. David had this desire once he came to Zion. He wanted to bring the ark into the city. Now, the ark is a picture of the manifest presence of God. I told that to you today right at the beginning. But there are certain principles that was in the ark. Within the ark was the golden pot of manna, which is a picture of the grace of God. Secondly, in the ark there was the rod of Aaron that had budded, which speaks of divinely appointed leadership. And then lastly, in the ark, there were the law of God, which speaks of the eternal covenant beyond material blessings. God is calling you to a deeper relationship with Him. He wants you to come to this place of position that is called Zion. But in order for you to get there, He must take you through a process of reform where He removes from your heart and from your life every form of inaccuracy. You see, what you need to understand is the ark consists of the grace of God, His divinely appointed leadership, and of course the Word, the covenant. So, in order to enter the ark, you must comply with these principles. You need to recognize grace and be attached to grace. You must recognize God's appointed leadership over your life. And you need to walk in a covenantal relationship with the Word of God. When David brought the ark, they first put it on a new cart and they drove the cart. But that was not the way that the ark was to be treated. And we know that Uzzah died when he tried to stop the ark from falling. And what we need to understand is that effort and human strength is not able to bring the ark, the manifest presence of God, into your city. 
human wisdom and intellect can never figure out the ways of God. You cannot compare them. The Lord teaches us that clearly in Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9, where he says that, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And I want to challenge you today, and I want to say to you, that if God has decided that your journey to come to the position that is called Zion, is directly correlated and connected to a man of grace that you need to be connected to in a covenantal relationship called a spiritual father. That is the only way you are going to get there. And the sooner you make peace with that and submit yourself to the word of the Lord with regards to that, the better for you. Now please don't go and misquote what I'm saying here and saying that now your spiritual father is the mediator between you and God. He can never be that. He can only facilitate what God is doing in your life because of the grace that God has placed upon his heart and upon his life. Directly after the stumbling of the oxen that carried the ark, David realized that he made a mistake. And he then, in First Chronicles 15 verse 3, it says, And David assembled all Israel and Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place, which he has prepared for it. Now what's one very important is David prepared a place for the ark. You have to prepare a place for the ark. You have to condition your thinking. You have to condition your mindset. That is how you prepare a place for the ark. A place needs to be prepared for the ark before it can come up. We are the temple of God. We are the house of the ark. The said man, the spiritual father, only prepares the structure in which the ark will be placed. The people follow the structure. God has ordinances and principles in place. You cannot override them or ignore them. God has laid a structure from the beginning of time. And we have to align ourselves to God's ways and then only will the ark come into Zion. We cannot try to bring in the ark with our human understanding, with our intellect, and with our knowledge, our ways and our thoughts. Uzzah and Ayu could not lead or guide the ark, and they dare not place and touch the ark with their hand. How then is the question, are we going to bring in this ark? Very simple. With the hand of your spiritual father. God's principles can only be brought in on the shoulder of the priest. The ark had to be carried on the shoulder of the priest and not on the wagon. Far too long we have allowed inaccuracies to creep into the church. We are now in a time and a season where God will no longer tolerate this. God is saying to us, get my principles right. Come to the position of the right order. And when order is right, and the place or the mindset is prepared, then and then only can the ark be brought up. As I said to you earlier, uh, that the ark is a representation of the manifest presence of God, the glory of God. The ark must come into the temple which is in us. You are the temple. God's glory will shine in and through you when you have put all three of these principles in the ark. We have to accurately align ourselves to God's order. In 
Psalm 50 verse 2 it says out of Zion the perfection of beauty God shines forth let me in closing tell you that in your journey in bringing the ark into your city called Zion you will have those in your journey that you will meet very same kind of attitudes and people that David was faced with We read about it in 1 Chronicles 15 verse 29 There are some that choose to be left out and not to be part of this process 1 Chronicles 15 verse 29 As the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David Michal, David's wife, the daughter of Saul Looking from her window, saw King David leaping as in sport, and she despised him in her heart. I want to say to you that in your journey of sonship, and in your journey of fathers and sons, you will meet those along your journey that will despise the journey that you are taking that will come to you and tell to you, you are crazy to submit to this father's and son's thing that will tell you that how can you allow another man to lord over your life and you have to make a decision of how you are going to deal with this thing and what you are going to do you don't have to say anything we know that the outcome of Michal's despising of David was that she was struck with boldness and you will find the church today there are many who are struck with boldness because they reject the structure of what God has developed and put to bring His glory and the ark into your city and you will find that those who refuse and reject the white skin of fathers and sons will find themselves born and without sons they will have members they will have a board that hires them and fires them but they will not have the fruit of the manifestation of mature sons of God that comes forth from their ministry and I want you to know today that as we come to the end of this day that you sitting here today that you are special to the Lord He has chosen you to be here today to hear this message to hear these principles and not only to hear them but to also apply them to your life and that places a great responsibility upon our shoulders you see you are now in a very very difficult place because as you go from here today and carry what was delivered to you today from the heavens you have responsibility to respond and the thing is you can never go out from here and say to the Lord, Lord I did not know you have now heard the principles 
you've seen, tasted and experienced the ones can. You know that the requirement is obedience to the word. The question now still remains, what are you going to do with the manna that God has delivered to you today? Remember that yesterday's manna is only going to give you words. You have to position yourself where you can constantly receive from the Lord the proceeding word of God, the now word, the word of what God is speaking now in this time, in this moment and in this season. And in order to receive that, you need to be accurately connected in a covenantal relationship with Christ. God bless you.